Welcome to Solving Linear Equations, uh, Linear Rational Equations, Part 2. This is a follow-up to Part 1. We're just doing a slightly more complicated looking uh, problem here with more complicated denominators. Now remember uh, what we're doing here is we're looking primarily at linear equations but some rational equations such as the equation here after the denominators are removed become linear so I'll refer to those as linear rationals and those are the equations that this podcast is about. Now anytime you come across an equation with fractions there's two steps you need to go through. First you need to identify any values of x which would cause division by zero in the problem. So look at the first fraction. If x was a 4 the bottom would be 4 minus 4. That's a zero. So I'd be dividing by zero. So I say note x cannot be 4. I take a look at the second fraction. In the second fraction I have x plus 2 on the bottom. If x was a negative 2 this would be a 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0 and I'd have 5 divided by 0. Can't divide by 0 so x cannot be negative 2. Now take a look at the third fraction. The third fraction, the denominator, is very complicated looking. So it's much harder to tell what values of x would cause division by 0. So the way we're going to get a look at this is to factor it. Since it's three terms, we'll try to unfoil it so we'll break it down to a binomial product. To get x squared, we'd have to multiply x times x. To get a negative for our last sign, we'd have to multiply either a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. And to get a negative 2 in the middle with an 8 on the end, the 4 would have to go negative and the 2 positive so that when we check our center term, we get negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x for our center term. Well, those are the same two factors on the bottom that we already had. So this one will be 0 when x is 4. This one will be 0 when x is negative 2. So we don't have to add any numbers to our list. The only numbers that can cause us to divide by 0 are 4 and negative 2. Now, if one of those turns out to be the answer, we're gonna have to throw it out. Now the next step is we want to remove the fractions. We've, we've used the fractions well. We've used them to find out what values of x are not allowed. Now that we've used them, let's get them out of there because they're making the problem too complicated. So to get them out of there, I'm gonna rewrite the problem with space to put in a big common denominator because look at what the common denominator is. It's this last denominator here because that's certainly divisible by x plus 2 and that's certainly divisible by x minus 4. So the LCD is x plus 2 times x minus 4. And to get rid of the fractions we're going to have to multiply every term by that common denominator. So I'm going to leave a lot of room to do that because that's really a big common denominator. And I'm going to rewrite that last fraction. We now know that the bottom is just x plus 2 times x minus 4, so that's the way I'm going to write it. And now I take my common denominator and I multiply it by every one of these terms, x plus 2 times x minus 4. Now I know this seems like a lot of work, but if you go through the steps, you tend not to make the mistakes, that's got to be an x minus 4 there, so let me, and that was times 5 over x plus 2, and that's equal to x plus 2 times x minus 4 times my last fraction. And when you do it that way, it's really easy to see the cancels. Here the x minus 4 and the x minus 4 cancel. So for what we're left with on the first term is just x plus 2 minus. In the second term, you can see the x plus 2 cancels the x plus 2. So this is going to give us 5 times x minus 4 is equal to. On the third one, the x plus 2's cancel, but so do the x minus 4's. And all we're left with is the 6, and it's not multiplied by anything. 
And notice how much simpler an equation this is than that original equation. Uh, boy, when you get rid of those denominators, there's just little left to do. Once the fractions are removed, get x out of the grouping symbol by distributing. Okay, I've got only one x in the, dis in the grouping symbol. That's this one here. This x is not in a grouping symbol. So I'm going to distribute that negative 5 here, and I'm going to distribute that negative 5 here. So I get x plus 2 minus 5x plus 20 is equal to 6. I didn't make that a very good x, so let me make a better x there. <clears throat> now on the left, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I've got a couple of pairs of like terms. I'm going to put the x terms together, negative 4x, and the constant terms together, plus 22 equals 6. Next step says get your x terms to one side and your non-x terms to the other. Well, all my x terms are on the left, so I don't have to get my x terms to one side. They're already on one side. I do have to take my non-x term, 22, and move it to the other side, so I do that by subtracting 22. Notice those equal signs coming straight down, always a number on the right and a number on the left. I never have a step where there's not a number on both sides of the equal sign. I have negative 4x basically plus 0, plus 22 minus 22. So that gives me negative 4x on this side. 6 plus negative 22 gives me negative 16 on the other side. And now to get x by itself, I reverse what is done to x. And what is done to x is it's multiplied. So to reverse that, I divide it. I'm dividing each side by negative 4. On the left, the negative 4's cancel each other, and I get x. On the right, I have a negative over a negative, which is a positive. And 16 over 4 is just 4. And you might be tempted to say, oh, man, that's it. I've got it. But remember, way back up here in the front, we made a note to ourselves. And the note said x could not be 4, because if x was 4 right here, we would be dividing by 0. So I have to throw that out and either say no solution, or I could say the solution set is the empty set, which is a 0 with a line through it. Either one of those would be a good answer to put on a test, either the empty set or no solution. And that concludes Solving Linear Rationals Part 2.